All around me were signs of anxiety, just mounds of excessive worry. And not just on the faces of strangers, but on the faces of people that I knew. How am I going to pay my bills? Or how will I make ends meet to buy grocery this week? How can I get through this day without having a panic attack? Excessive worry just everywhere. And I'm sure it was for a good cause, but I wanted to avoid becoming what I was seeing. So I got to thinking, how can I minimize my risk of falling into a pool of anxiety, worry less, stress less, and live a happier, more prosperous life? And so I made a list, a real checklist, because of course I could do what a lot of people do, I could ignore my problems and hope for a favorable outcome, but that's not taking responsibility for my life. Or I can distract myself and with social media, shopping, talking on the phone, or becoming a part of what I call the matrix. Or worse, I could pretend that chronic stress was just a part of everyday life, some kind of test. And when I thought about that checklist and I went over it, I'm saying to myself, that's a load of chaos. So I decided to do this instead. First, I had to understand the difference between worry and anxiety. And I learned that worry is temporary and anxiety is persistent. However, and this is where it gets really tricky and really scary with worry. While worry and anxiety is different, Worry is still a cognitive, so it's a mental component of anxiety. So in other words, it's a stepping stone. And one of the three main building blocks of anxiety. So in other words, if we don't take control over our worrying, our worrying will take control over us and eventually become anxiety. Now, when that happens, were then added to the 3.1% of Americans suffering from anxiety every day. And while that number doesn't seem large, let me break it down for you. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, anxiety disorders are the most common form of mental illness in the U.S. That's huge in itself, affecting over 40 million adults every single year. Now that is 3.1% of the population. That's a large number. And it was a box I wasn't willing to fit in. And I don't want you to fit in that box either. However, now that we know the difference between worry and anxiety, how are we going to keep ourselves from stressing less, worrying less and minimizing our anxiety? Well, for me, I decided to accept that worry and anxiety in small amounts, they're natural. It's a part of being human. And whether we want to face it or not, we all have a bit of anxiety and worry from time to time. But I was not willing to accept clinical anxiety. Clinical anxiety is different from regular anxiety because Clinical anxiety is worry that rises high enough to decrease your performance at a very rapid rate and hinder impairment. That's very dangerous because my life is my life and I want to control it. Your life is your life, sis, and you want to control it, right? So therefore we have to get a handle on minimizing our worrying and our stress so they don't turn into clinical anxiety because as, once that happens, you're in a very dangerous boat. However, knowing all of that is good, but how can we control our thoughts and our worries that come leading up to high anxiety or clinical anxiety? I decided to teach myself everything that I could about thought reframing, and you should too because thought reframing teaches us how to replace our negative thinking, our negative thoughts with thoughts of positivity. 
And that is crucial when handling anxiety. So I won't meet this deadline and there is no way I can say that. Or what if I mess up? Changes to I can get this done. Yeah, I can say what I need to say and I will get it right. So reframing for me allowed me to focus on what I could control rather than what I couldn't. Epoch Titus said, when I see an anxious person, I ask myself, what do they want? For if a person wasn't wanting something outside of their own control, why would they be stricken by anxiety? That's a good question, right? And it's one that I begin thinking about when I feel myself worrying about things and situations outside of my control and I start reframing my thoughts. Next, I practice what I call the half and half method or seeing the glass half full rather than half empty. In other words, I choose a positive outlook in a negative situation. And while this isn't always easy, it is doable with practice. And you can do this by focusing on what you have rather than what you lack because this perspective can help calm anxiety by encouraging gratitude and optimism. And that's not always easy either, but it is a good thing to have, being grateful for what we have, focusing on that rather than our lack. It also reduces stress and promotes a more balanced view of the challenges that we face. And by emphasizing the positives, we shift our mindset away from fear and worry and towards hope and stability. And hope, if you did not know, is a major component of serenity. And so when I think about hope, I call it hope the mental note because hope, especially in very high levels, tells the brain that everything is and will be okay, no matter the circumstance. And it's an emotion, yes, but something about hope is that it amplifies the likelihood of positive actions or events occurring in your future. And that's a fabulous thing because that's already something to counteract anxiety. So hope is critical. It's a crucial thing to have when we're battling anxiety. Next to worry less, stress less, and minimize anxiety, I work very hard to embrace the present moment. And something that helps me is the five, four, three, two, one grounding exercise. I don't know about you, but I felt like I was just counting down to something. <laughs> but this technique helps me stay in the present moment because it presents me with an opportunity to identify five things I can see, four things I can touch, three things I can hear, two things I can smell, and one thing I can taste. Because that's what the present moment is about. Being in the present moment also helps redirect our mind away from anxious thoughts to more calmer thoughts. When you get time, check out my free e-guide. It's 30 days to more happiness. It's in the description box below. But I break down the 54321 grounding exercise and I give you fabulous tips on what you can focus on. It's completely free. I'm not even asking for your email address in return. It's free because I really want to help you minimize your anxiety. Next, I practice something that I call the detached cure. You may have heard of this, but it's basically sitting your phone down or your tablet or your electric devices, sitting them down away out of sight to help you focus on what you need to focus on. And you do this for a set period of time. So maybe like two to three hours. Um, it's also often called digital detox. <laughs> and I know that's a very familiar term. Doing this has helped me tremendously disconnect from all my devices. It's helped me break away from the constant notifications, chiming in the background. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have X, 
We have now threads. We have TikTok. We also have regular email. And as if we already don't have enough of that, right? So it's a good thing to break away from those constant notifications and to minimize screen time because this helps reduce anxiety in a fabulous way. And it, it improves your overall mental clarity. So those are already blessings, right? When it comes to minimizing our anxiety. Detaching also allows you time to focus on what's truly important. So for me, that it's family and prayer for you that could look like meditation, affirmations and healthy connections leading me to number seven to worry less, stress less and minimize anxiety. I practice gratitude. I try my best to have a mood of gratitude. And now we don't need research or science to prove that gratitude increases our mood or happiness or health or overall well-being. We've been around long enough to have experienced and witnessed this. However, research does prove or it does show that gratitude or those who are grateful are more intelligent. Yes, I am. Thank you. You are too. I, I truly believe that. We're more intelligent, happier, healthier, and we often live a lot longer. And as Prince Ia said, gratitude is a superpower because it really is. Having a mood of gratitude will help you minimize anxiety and worry less. Here's a bonus. I call it happy in five. It's five ways to increase your happiness in five days. Take a screenshot right now, do it right now. And remember to download my free e-guide and you will reduce your anxiety, decrease your worry and find more happiness. Next, I think by far, this is the best advice I have received in my life when it comes to minimizing worry and anxiety. And that's choosing not to care about the unkind and negative thoughts of others. That's a big one. Just don't care. Nope. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you think about me. Your negative thoughts are your business. They are not my business because there are so many miserable people out there that have miserable things to say about you and your dreams and your goals. And truth be told, misery loves company. We've all heard that before. But if you love yourself like I know you do and you try your best, the rest of those negative thoughts are history. They don't matter. Let them go. Next, I practice solitude. Don't fear being alone. Trust me, you need solitude. So don't fear being alone and don't confuse being alone with being lonely. Don't confuse it with loneliness. Sit with yourself. Listen to yourself. Get to know yourself because the best you evolves in the solace. Next, I speak kindly to myself. I try very hard to do this. Now we're all human. We have these thoughts about ourselves when we look in the mirror or just you know where we are in life. We, if we haven't accomplished things that we've wanted to accomplish, we all have these thoughts. But try very hard to speak kindly to yourself about yourself and about others. Because when we allow greatness to flow from our lips, from our tongue, we become what we think. If we speak negativity over ourselves, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, that becomes our reality. And Proverbs 18.21 tells us, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. In other words, if you speak greatness over yourself, my friend, you will be great. So speak kindly about yourself. Next, say no. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> Eliminate the need to say yes to everything. Paul Kolho said, never say yes with your lips if in your heart you're saying no. 
When you focus on saying yes to the things that you want to say yes to, you allow yourself to align with what you're meant to align with. You step outside of people pleasing and into alignment. So it is very important to eliminate the need to say yes. And lastly, how I worry less, stress less, and minimize my anxiety is I make a list and I don't always check it twice. Sometimes I do, but not always. I write out my day most of the time. I know what I'm going to do tomorrow before tomorrow even gets here. And it's not that I'm living in the future and I'm not being in the present moment. I often do this before I go to bed. So I write out my day before it starts and there's no shame in my game. I'm not ashamed to say this because planning my day ahead of time helps me minimize anxiety because it reduces uncertainty. And as we know, uncertainty is a leading cause of high anxiety. So when you plan your day ahead of time, it's going to reduce your anxiety because it minimizes uncertainty. It also reduces the overwhelm of juggling multiple responsibilities by allowing you to prioritize tasks. This also reduces uncertainty. It improves your focus and it enhances time management. So planning your day ahead of time is a very good thing if you are someone who deals with anxiety or high anxiety. It allows you to take control over time management and time management lets you allocate specific time for specific tasks, helping to prevent those last minute rushes, the anxiety that comes with them. So make a list. Check it twice if you need to. Don't be ashamed to do whatever it is that you need to do to minimize anxiety. Because worry steals life. It says, if you wait with me, I'll stay with you. But I have no intentions on freeing you. And as Charles Spurgeon says, anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength. My friend, thank you so much for watching. I'm author Katie Gates, and this is the place where I help women like you and me become the best people that we can be. If that is your thing, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, like this video, and leave me a comment. Let me know if you are someone, de if you are someone dealing with anxiety, how you handle it. Until next time, again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.